Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. In the last episode, we haven't found any new clues as to the identity of our kidnapper or how to get outside of the school, so with nothing better to do, I decided to start spending time getting to know Saika and then later on Celeste. A couple days passed of me, of me doing this, and eventually Taka has everybody gather into the dining hall for a breakfast meeting to discuss any new clues we might have discovered, but, well, we didn't discover anything new. So, yeah, the meeting ended up being somewhat pointless. And Monokuma shows up after uh, Hina expresses, uh, still choose, decides to express hope that help will still eventually come. And purely in an effort to both shoot down that thought and kind of to express his uh, boredom, frankly, with the fact that nobody's started killing anybody yet. So, in his, um, in his wisdom, Monokuma has decided that maybe everybody needs a motive in order to further incentivize everybody to start killing each other. And whatever this motive is, it's it is, is undoubtedly contained on a DVD on some DVDs that he wants us to look at in a special room in the school somewhere, where you can uh, where you can view the DVDs. And I happen to know just where we need to go to do just that. So, me and Saika are going to go down there and see what's on our DVDs. It's in this room right here. The AV room. You know, I can't remember. Did I look in here earlier? Huh? There's some inside this cardboard box. Oh, wait a minute. I was I wanted to save that for last. Never mind. But too late now. It's a bunch of DVDs. And each one has a label with someone's name. With someone's name. This must be the video for each of us he mentioned. Uh, hold on a second. I better go tell everyone. She just ran off. I didn't follow after her. I just stood right there where I was. The DVDs in front of me had robbed me of all awareness. I was rooted in place. I think I see something. Well, we'll see what that is in just a sec. Wait, did I say something new? What kind of monitor is this? Who'd even make this kind of thing? It has Monokuma Co. written across it. Guess they covered all the details. This covered box of DVDs were in. Okay, I think we need to examine this now. Next to the monitor is a high-end DVD player. It'll probably play those DVDs no problem. Maybe I'll just watch mine real quick, before everyone else gets here. I soared through the DVDs I'd found in the box, and found the one with my name on it. Then I slid it into the expensive-looking player. I sat down and stared intently at the darkened screen. And then... <gasps> I yelled out without realizing it, and my heart started racing. Because what I saw in that monitor... It was my family. You getting picked to attend Hope's Peak Academy is like a dream come true! Make sure you do your best. I'm so proud of you, son. But remember, don't push yourself too hard. Are you really watching this, Makoto? Good luck, okay? If it had ended there, that would have been fine. A message of love and support. After leaving my family behind to attend Hope's Peak, it would have given me hope, given me strength. If this was a normal school, I would have been happy if a little embarrassed. With my family's support to rely on, I would have been motivated to do even better. But here, now, it was totally different. I wasn't living an ordinary school life. So I had a pretty strong feeling that the video wasn't going to end there. 
I hated having that feeling, but it turned out I was absolutely right. How unfortunate. <sighs> Who the hell fucked up my house? I should sue. This time I couldn't even make a sound. My voice just died. Where'd everyone go? It looks like a war zone or something. As if in reply, a voice came floating out of the speakers. I recognized the voice, of course. It was him. Makoto Naegi, accepted into Hope Speak Academy, and his family, who supported such a lucky boy. But it seems like something's happened to this family's well-being. Oh boy, this is bad. What could have possibly happened to this family's well-being? Look for the answer after graduation. What is this? I think it's pretty clear that this is the motive that uh, the bear wants to give you to try and shiv somebody in the face. What happened to everyone? I started trembling. I could feel a fear and anger building up inside me, like hot magma. God damn it! I slammed my fist against the desk over and over again. A single thought was racing through my mind. What else? How el how could I think about anything else? I have to get out of here. I have to get out! Right now! I need to make sure everyone's safe! Kodo? What, what happened? Make sure who's safe. I noticed everyone standing around the entrance to the AV room. They stare at me. Face is full of confusion. Um... What's going on? Foul word. I point to the cardboard box. Is it, like... Is that what Monokuma was talking about? What does this mean? It's on them. They all gathered around the box, and each of them grabbed a DVD with their name on it. One by one, they each rushed to a monitor. It didn't take long for them to react. What the... What the fuck? Huh? This can't be real, right? It has to be fake, right? Hey, hold on. Yeah, no way it's real. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. Let me out of here! As soon as I saw their reactions, I knew. They'd all seen something like what I'd seen. Nobody even bothered trying to hide their fear and confusion. Except for her. Even now, she was totally calm. I see. I see. So this is what he meant by motive. He wants to fuel our desire to leave so that we're more likely to start killing each other. Yes, indeed. It's the, it is the classic prisoner's dilemma. Hmm? Huh? Hmm. Let me use an example. Imagine two sent countries are on the brink of war. But both countries want peace, and each commits to scaling back their forces as a sign of good faith. But there's a chance that one country may betray the other, so each country fears lowering their guard. The result is that neither scales back their forces, and they both end up betraying each other. Do you understand? In other words, the fear of invisible treachery becomes the greatest enemy of stability. <laughs> that kind of sounds like us right now. No kidding. Everyone says they'll work together, but in our hearts we're all afraid someone might betray us. Don't put those awful thoughts in our head. That's exactly what they want us to do. Huh? He is right. You kind of just playing into his. You're just kind of playing into Makuma's hands right now. You can say that, but maybe you're thinking that once everyone drops their guard, you can just. What? what, what? Is this? Hey, 
This is exactly what Monokuma, or whoever's behind this, wants. They want us to fight. Don't you see? Yeah, you're right. We all just need, we all need to calm down. So then. Okay then. Maybe we should all start by just talking. Maybe if we all just talk about what we saw, that'll help get everything out of our system. Hmm. Besides, I think we're all super curious, right? I wonder what was in everyone's videos. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Hey, Saika. You don't look too good. What was in your video, Saika? What's your problem? What's wrong? Just hurry up and tell us. Well, given what we've given what she's told us about herself so far, I think it's pretty easy to deduce what she might have seen in that video of hers. Saika? And this isn't me spoiling anything, this is just me using deductive reasoning based on what we've learned up until this point. I gently place my hand on her shoulder. STOP IT! She pushed my hand away and suddenly ran off. Saika? That's enough. Let her go. I can't do that! I have to go make sure she's okay! I hate romantic comedies like this. I don't care what happens to her personally. What? That's because you're totally thoughtless. Um... I'm... really worried. <sighs> then why don't you go do whatever you think you have to? You have to. We don't have. We don't all have to stick stick around together, right? I hope you are well. Speaking of which, I have my own things to take care of. Goodbye. Like what? Setting up some kind of booby trap? Everyone went their separate ways. But I don't have time to worry about them right now. I have to go find Saika! Well, I know where she is, so... We can take our dear sweet time getting there. First, I might as well just go see what I can pry out of everybody else. You sound very distressed, my friend. Maybe you should sit down. Hey, Makoto! These videos are some kind of hoax. These videos are some kind of hoax, right? Right? I want to think so. But. What the heck? What the hell, man? <laughs> this is all one big lie. It has to be. <laughs> you can't keep telling this lie to yourself forever, man. What was in your video, Fumi? Um. Mm. Yeah. So it would seem. Before you go asking someone else, it's only polite that you say what you saw first, don't you think? Maybe I'd be inclined to get follow this advice of yours if I had any reason to suspect that you would actually live up to your end of the bargain. But since I don't, well, I. Why are you covering your ears? Yes, indeed. If I don't hear yours, you don't have to say mine. I don't have to say mine. It's the art of see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I don't think that's how it works. You just don't want to tell me yours. You could have just said not interested and left it at that. What was in your video, Taka? Oh. I saw. Sorry. It's gonna, it's gonna take me some time to figure out how to put it into words. Well, while you're doing that, I'll go talk to Sir to uh, Cheerio. What should I do? Everyone's really upset. I mean, how could anyone be calm right now? Why? How can something like that even exist? I just don't understand. I don't. To be able to do something like that. Is it because they really are the murderous fiend? Well, they don't have to be THE murderous fiend in order to be a sadistic asshole. Just want to put, I mean... Uh, there are a lot of evil people out there. What was in your video, Sakura? I'm sorry. 
my family. But I'm not upset by what I saw. If you're overpowered, you must accept your death. That is the way of my family. Damn. But still, I refuse to believe they would lose so easily. How? Well, we got one person to finally tell us what was on their video. What was in your video, Kyoko? Well. Why should I tell you? As forthcoming of information as always. Where could she have gone? She can't have gone far. I think I should check around the school. She should be in this classroom. Never mind, I meant the I meant the other one. This one. Actually, I don't think I've had time to look at that our classroom yet, so after I check on you, I'll go back in there and look around real quick. Anyway, you don't look too terribly, uh, good right now. I found her in one corner of an empty classroom. She was sitting in a chair, hands on her knees, staring absently at the floor. She looked like maybe she was upset, or angry, or no. She didn't have any expression at all. I disagree. She definitely has an expression on her face. And it's one that really has me worried. There was nothing on her face that you could call an emotion. Uh, panic, maybe, I think would be the best way to describe it. Restrained panic. It was as if her original mask had been stripped away. Saika? Are you okay? What do you think, genius? Uh, uh. Yeah. I'm fine. Actually, no. How could I possibly be fine? Uh, uh. What did we do to end up like this? Why are they doing such terrible things to us? Why? Why? I want out. Let me out of here right now! Saika, calm down. As she thrashed around, I grabbed her by the shoulders. Huh? I understand. I know how you feel right now. When I think about when I think what might have happened to my family. But now more than ever we have to stay calm. This is exactly what they want. They want us to lose our composure and stop thinking rationally. Think about it. Those videos have to be fake. Because those things really had happened. People out there would be in an uproar. Our families, the police, everyone. Right? So just calm. So let's just calm down, okay? Otherwise, we've already lost. I knew I was trying to convince myself just as much as her. I kept repeating those words to myself. To clear away the images that have been burned into my brain. Be calm, okay? Just be calm. As long as we work together, I'm sure we can find some way out of here. And help might even come before that. But what if there isn't a way out? What if help never comes? Then we gotta make sure we keep everybody in, keep ourselves in check and just adapt, as Celeste likes to remind us. If that happens, then I'll get then I'll get you out of here myself, no matter what it takes. When I said that, I paused. I had no idea what had come over me. Sayaka, please. Help me! Her voice was small and shaky. Why? Why is this happening to me? To kill or be killed? I just can't take this anymore! Sayaka. <gasps> Finally, 
as she raised her face up to my chest. She looked at me with those big, wet eyes of hers. Makoto! Can I... Can I believe what you said? Huh? That you'll help me get out? Ideally, I would like to get everybody out, and everybody would include you, so... Yes, you can believe it. You can believe those words. No matter what it takes. Absolutely. Makoto! Makoto... You're the only one I can trust. So please... No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. Huh? Of course I'll be there for you. No matter what, I'm always on your side. I mean... You are my sis my assistant, after all. Makoto... Thank you, Makoto. Can you say that? I feel like I can keep going. I... I can get through this. As long as you're here with me. Because I'm your assistant. Like you said, I'm your assistant. The smile I'd come to know so well returned to her face. It felt a little forced, but still. It was a huge improvement over how she was before. Hey! Hey! It's standing up! You mean, uh... My, you mean my raised fist is standing up to your face? Because that's totally something I would, I would have to make sure my fist does. Makoto, it's standing up! What's standing up? What are you... Do you even have to ask? Your flagpole! Get the hell out of here! No! No! I want to join in! Damn it! Well, if you won't leave, then tell us what the hell is up with those videos! <laughs> it's about to come out. It's gonna come out! My pristine, pure white... Yeah! Stuffing! You perverted little bear, you. My honest, innocent stuffing is about to come gushing out! I balled up my fist. Took aim and swung as hard as I could. Not, not a brilliant idea, considering what almost happened to Mondo. I had never put so much energy into a single motion before in my life. I leaned back, channeling all my power, and let go of everything I had. Gah! Are you okay? If I hadn't avoided your punch, you would have just violated school regulations. Didn't I technically already violate them anyway by attempting to enact violence against the headmaster? Not that I'm gonna, not that I'm complaining, not that I'm gonna point that out, not that I would want you to realize that, but still. But boy, are you slow! Slow, 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 slow! I could have downed a thousand dollar full course dinner in the time it took you to finish your swing. Your speed, agility, alertness, passion, boldness, sense of despair, antagonization, it's all lacking. Hey, if it pisses you off, I'll take it. Um. What the heck was that just now? Me failing epically to land a blow on the nose of the evil bear. He just wanted to mess with us. Well, for now, you want to just head back? Yeah. Makuma had come along and swiftly destroyed the good mood we just created. Saik and I head back to the dorms. You should get some rest, Saika. You still look pretty shaken. Sorry. I'm sorry for making you worry about me. You're right. I'm going to I'm going to lay down for a bit. But nod in a small bow. She disappeared into her room. Now on my own, I headed off to tell everyone that Saika was okay. Once that was done, I decided to go back to my room. I think it was hard to th think after watching that deranged video. I needed some rest of my own.
Jeez. Seriously, what's going on here? There's just so many problems. I can't even decide what the biggest problem is. That we're trapped in here? That what I saw in the video might be real? I think your biggest problem is everybody else around you getting pushed off the deep end and murdering your, your sorry ass. Monokuma? What the mastermind has in store for us? Or are we our biggest problem? I want to get out of here. But I could never kill someone. Do the others all feel the same? Yeah, that's definitely the biggest problem right now. I have a guest! Huh? When I opened my eyes, they darted immediately to the clock. It's almost 10 o'clock. I fell asleep without even realizing it. Night time's about to start. So how come everyone- so how come someone's here? Sorry. I'm really sorry I came by so late. Still not looking too good. Saika? Saika? What are you doing out so late? That's when I noticed. Her body was trembling. Is everything okay? It was so strange. Sorry to bother you, but something really weird just happened. And what was that? Something weird? Just a little while ago, I was laying down in my broom. And all of a sudden, my door starts rattling and shaking. Her voice sounded like all the air had been squeezed out of her lungs. Just hearing her talk made me tense up. I was so scared. It was like someone was trying to force the door open. My door was locked, so I couldn't get in, of so they couldn't get in, of course. But they started shaking the door harder and harder. I was so scared I couldn't even move. So what happened? After a while, it just... stopped. I let some time go by. Then I got up and opened the door to check outside. Makoto. There was nobody there. Someone tried to force their way into your room? But... Who would do something like that? It's not like I'm suspicious of anyone here, but still, it makes me nervous. What if something like that happened in the middle of the night? What would I do then? Well, as long as you keep your door locked, you should be okay. You don't have to worry about that, right? I mean, we can go outside during night time. During night, we can't. We can't go outside during night time. But, but that's just a promise we made, right? If someone decided to break that promise. Then what could we do to stop them? Then... Why don't you stay in my room tonight? Would that make you feel a little better? Huh? What? All I said in the, All it said in school regulations was that we had to sleep in the dorm rooms, right? It didn't state specifically which room each person had to sleep in. So... Hey, um... But... Two people sharing one room is... You know... Ah! Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. I didn't even think about that. Honestly, that didn't even cross my mind. Uh, um... No, I know. Me either. It's not even that... It's not even that I mind the idea, but... Um, if you don't mind, could we maybe switch rooms? Just for tonight? Wouldn't it be better to just stay together, honestly? I mean, I could just sleep in the bathroom or something, maybe, I don't know. Because, I mean, if you're honestly that worried about someone coming in to try and attack you, all you'd really be doing is just switching occupants. I would still put Makoto in possible danger. Switch rooms. If it'll help put your mind at ease, then it's totally fine with me. But... I don't mind you staying in my 
I, I don't mind you staying in my room, but... Are you sure you're okay with me staying in yours? That doesn't, like, concern you? It's fine. I trust you. In that case, then... It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug fight. Oh man, it's already nighttime. Okay, so it's settled. I'll head to your room right now. Oh, if we're gonna trade rooms, we better trade keys, too. <laughs> oh, that's right. We'll have to trade keys. Again? Like I said, I'm psychic. Huh? Aren't you- Hey, aren't you gonna say you were just kidding? <laughs> what if I wasn't just kidding? Something resembling a smile had made its way to her face. Thank goodness. It looks like she's already started to get back to normal. Okay, we better trade keys then. Okay. Yep, let's do it. We exchanged keys, and when I looked back up at her again, there was another worried expression there. Uh, um. Koto, please be careful. If someone comes to the door, don't open it no matter what. I won't. Same goes for you, Saika. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. <laughs> even, if it, even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Oh, by the way, just so you know, my bathroom door tends to get stuck. There's a little trick to opening it. You have to turn the knob, then lift up on the door while you pull it out. Just do that and the door should open no problem. Okay, but the showers don't work during nighttime anyway, right? Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. <laughs> but I guess I might use it when I get up in the morning. So thank you. Okay, well, I better get going. See you tomorrow, Saika. Hey, um. Oh, and about what I said before? Hmm? <laughs> when I said I was psychic, I, it really was a joke. Honestly, I'm just very perceptive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good night, then. See you in the morning. Saka gave me one last parting smile, and I headed off to my room. I looked around as soon as I got out into the hall. Everyone else's doors were closed. There was no sign of life. Good. There's nobody here. Making sure nobody was around to spot me, I rushed into Saika's room. Well, there's one thing you two have in common at the very least. Your rooms are both pretty bland. So this is Saika's room. It really doesn't look any different from mine. It smells nice, though. Okay, well, before I head to bed, I'm gonna go look around for some more mana coins. If I remember right, all the girls' private bathrooms have locks on them. I'm a little, I'm a little reluctant to go in. This is one of the mon- okay. We already know about that monitor. We got this trash can here. It's kind of weird to dig through other people's trash, but I couldn't help taking a quick peek. That's... That's her DVD. There wasn't any doubt about it. It was the DVD of her name on it that we found in the AV room. That reminds me. I never did get a chance to find out what was in her video. But it's probably best if I wait until she brings it up again. Well, considering that she threw it away, she probably wouldn't be all that eager to talk about it anyway. I mean, 
tossing something like that in the trash pretty much strongly implies you don't even want to think about it. Let alone talk about it. My room came with a toolkit. The psych has a sewing kit. Just like the note said. But next to it is... A map of the body's vital organs. I don't think Psycho would be well, would like me snooping around too much. I should probably go to bed soon. As I lowered myself onto Psycho's bed, a pleasant fragrance enveloped me. Psycho's scent. May it bring me some sweet dreams. Feeling a little better than before, I fell asleep. Yet another Monokuma Theater. Imagine you're all in a big spaceship, in the middle of an intergalactic adventure. You've heard of Noah's Ark, right? We're sort of like that. We've set sail and left Earth behind. Here, you don't have to worry about crazy neighbors, corrupt cops, drunk drivers, or pyromaniacs. You don't have to worry about the ozone layer, or asthma-inducing air po pollution. And of course, you don't have to stress about studying for finals, or practicing for the big game. But, but even our divine world of freedom has a few rules. After all, freedom can only exist because of rules. If you're really dead set on returning to that tiny piece of dog poop you call Earth, please do your best to follow the rules. I hope I made myself perfectly clear. So then, let's everyone do our best to follow these new guidelines and live happily ever after together! In case some of you are wondering what the point of all these Monokuma Theater things are, if memory serves, there's some of them are supposed to act as foreshadowing for uh, future events that often occur within the same chapter that they show up in. But I don't really think, but with how vague most of them are, it's kind of hard to tell which ones they could, what they could exactly be alluding to at times, even if you know ahead of time what's going to go on. So yeah. Have fun, you can have fun deciphering what the hell he could be alluding to, if anything at all, every time these things show up. And as for me, well, I'm just going to deal with what's going to come my way within the next few minutes. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! I sat up, still half asleep, and rubbed my eyes. Slowly I pulled myself out of bed. I remembered I was in Saika's room. I just remembered. I promised to eat breakfast with everyone else. I better get going. I left Saika's room and made my way towards the dining hall. Very few people are here right now. A few people had already gathered at the dining hall by the time I got there. <laughs> Hello, Makoto, and good morning. Can you believe it? I was the very first one here this morning. No, Mr. Punctual, I totally can't believe at all that you were right on time before everyone else showed up. I never would have seen that coming. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Cheerio. Hey, Makoto. Morning. <laughs> Suppose I'm early. I figured everyone who had arrived on time could be considered model high schoolers. And the ones who showed up a little late. Yo. Sorry. Sorry I'm late. My makeup just would not cooperate this morning. Ah, well, hello. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. My morning uh, duty took a little longer than usual. 
I don't think I even want to know what duty you could be referring to. We're the types of a more relaxed sense of time. Most high schoolers fall into this category. And finally, the ones who kept everyone waiting forever. Indeed. I suppose I'm late. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My bad, my bad. My bad, guys. Sucked right through my alarm. What's your problem? What? Is it so awful to be late? It can be, depending. <gasps> I didn't oversleep, just so you know. Nope. Got lost. I blame the Bermuda Triangle. Got lost how? We had this this light. The layout on the first floor is pretty damn simple. I don't care about time or other people. Don't care about time or other people in general. They're the kind to move at their own pace. Regardless, everyone had arrived. No, not really. We're missing uh, four. Uh, we're missing four eyes and uh, Sayaka. At least that's how it was supposed to go. Hmm. Wait, aren't we still missing some people? Uh. Yeah, Saika and, and Byakuya aren't here yet. I don't know about Byakuya, but... I would definitely put Saika in the model high schooler category. So for her to be so late... What? There you are. What's going on? Did something happen? Yo. Hey man, have you seen Saika? <laughs> Why would I have? I just came straight from my room to here. Did he? Did she forget about our breakfast promise? However, I got the sense she always had her stuff together. Listening to everyone talk like that, a small dark speck of unease rose up within, rose up inside of me, and that speck started to grow quickly. Yeah. I know what you're thinking, buddy. I need to go. I have to, I have to check on her! The words had barely left my lips before I flew out into the hall. Where I, where I head first was. My room. Where I let Saika stay for a single night. Where she was supposed to be safe. But over the course of that one night... Yeah, this is definitely not looking good. At all. The room had been, been completely transformed. What the hell? Looks like I had one hell of a struggle in here. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. It's the sheath for the replica sword. The sword itself has been removed. More importantly, where's Saika? So, going by the state of the room, a sharp object was involved within the struggle, clearly. Because the sword itself, if I remember correctly, I'm sure I do, it, the sword itself isn't sharp. It's actually a blunt object. It's just more of a decoration than anything else. So somebody had to bring a sharp object in here. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. It's been taken out of its sheath. Importantly, we're Saika. Got my uh, keychain on the ground. There's a keychain on the ground. It's my name on it. There's my it has my name on it, so it must be my room key. I gave it to Saika when we traded rooms. There's sla there are slashes and gouges on the walls and the floor. Importantly, we're Saika. We'll get to her in a minute, man. Hold on. The display stand the sword was on. There's slashes and gouges on the walls and floor. Mm -hmm. I want to look at the monitor, man. The bed's been damaged too. The toolkit has been messed with. The toolkit is still inside the drawer and it's still sealed. We're Saika. You're not even gonna say anything about the notepad. It looks like the lint roller has way less sheets than it, than it used to. 
I wonder why that is. More importantly, where's Saika? Okay, let's go look inside, because this door is just hanging ajar. Better check the bathroom. Let's take a look inside. Brace yourselves. took me a second to realize I was screaming. Yeah, somebody did a serious number on you. Also, I like the fact that the blood is pink. This is a interesting staple of the Danganronpa series, is that you, I think, I think it might be born out of, of uh, censorship, but yeah, they make the they make the blood pink in this series for some reason instead of just plain red. Probably to uh, make what goes on in this story seem a little less graphic than it really is to you know the eyes of the moral guardians out there and such. Because you know we have a setting here where we have high school age students basically killing each other, and so to make the blood red would just make the reality of what's going on here sink in a little bit. At least I think that's what the logic was behind the change in color for the overseas release. Because I think in Japan, the blood is actually still red. Again, I could be mistaken about this. I never actually looked too deep into this little tidbit. But yeah, if you're just playing the overseas versions like what I'm playing here, this is something that you get that you just get used to. Oh shit. Um, it took me a second to realize I was screaming. What I saw it dug its way into my eyes and buried itself in my brain. And then. And then. Everything went black. Chapter 1, to survive deadly life. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring at a huge ceiling. It was a ceiling I remembered seeing before. And when I sat up, I saw someone looking at me. Again, it was someone I'd seen before. How kind of you to carry me all the way, carry me all the way to the gym. Ah. ah, you're awake. Finally. Are you okay? Yeah. Now's no time for sleeping. Get your ass up. Huh? Uh, um. You're unconscious, dude. I had to carry you back here. Well. Well, it's no it's no surprise considering what happened. What happened? Um. Hey, are you okay? Obviously he's not okay. Someone was just murdered inside his bathroom. So it wasn't a dream? What I saw? It was real? Hm. That's right. It really did happen. Sayaka is dead. And so begins our killing game proper. A deep, dark despair worked its way through my body, and it exploded out of me. I shot, off, I shot up and took off running. Hey, where do you think you're going? I have to see for myself. I have to see if Saika is... If Saika is, you already saw, man. Just give up. You can check once, twice, a thousand times. Saika is completely and irre irrevocably dead. No! I have to see for myself! What? Listen to us, man! What? what do you think's gonna happen if you go out there? Well, what good is it gonna do just sitting around here? I mean, why are you all hanging out in the gym at a time like this? Our friend, Saika, she's. she's dead! 
dead. When I said that, it finally hit me. I realized she was really gone. Calm down. None of us wants to be here right now either. Then why? Shouldn't it be obvious? Monokuma he told us all come here. Well, hold on! Don't talk like that! We all protested it! I mean, we remember the terrible price Saiga had to pay. But... So... I'm the one who convinced them to come. Right now, we need to hear whatever he says. We're his prisoners, right? It's not a good idea to defy him without reason. Correct. We don't need to make any more sacrifices than we already have. I do agree with you. Why should we listen to anything he has to say? It's obvious he's the one who killed Saika! Wrong! I would never do that! If you can believe anything, you can believe that! <laughs> he's here again. Hey, um... Unless someone violates a school regulation, I absolutely will not interfere. I can promise you, I won't do anything that goes against the purpose of your school life here. Listen up! I'm famous at safari parks throughout the world for following the bear times one rule. But... Then... Who did it? Who killed her? Come on! You already know the answer! The one who killed her is... One of you! Nobody had a reply for that. One of us killed Sayaka? Don't be stupid. That's... Wah -wah? Hmm? What's the matter? You guys all look like you're about to get see a dove get shot up with a Gatling gun. <laughs> Don't you remember what I told you when this all began? Yahoo! One of you decided to kill Sayaka so that you could graduate. Someone's just following the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. Well... You're lying, right? Remember that little Monokuma theater we just saw right before this part of the chapter began? About, about you know, Monokuma wanting us to follow the rules and enjoy our new life here? Well, this is kind of what that segment was alluding to. Someone followed the rules down to the letter in this particular instance. And it ended up costing someone's life. You're lying, right? Of course he's lying. I'm telling you, he killed her! Wrong. Nope, sorry. One of you is now a bona fide killer. If they wanted to, the one who did it could testify to that little fact. What? Without thinking, I looked around at everyone. They all had the same looks on the look on their faces. Everyone looked at each other with a combination of fear, suspicion, and confusion. Uh, um... Are you serious? What? What is this? Someone... Someone killed someone! <laughs> it is amazing what some people are capable of. Just hold on. Hey, hold on! Don't just assume he's telling the truth! Stop talking. That's enough. Before we do anything else, I'd like to confirm something with the stuffed animal here. If one of us really did kill her, that person gets to graduate from the school, right? Huh? Huh? Come on. Don't play dumb. That's what you said, isn't it? If you kill someone, you get to leave. <laughs> but you're forgetting one part of the rule, Byakuya. They have to make sure they don't get caught. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's cuz... Naive. Naive. You're just so naive. You really you think it's really that easy? You can you can just kill someone and waltz on out of here? Hey! You're super now. You're super naive. Devilishly naive. Hellishly naive. No, no, no. The real thing has just begun. 
the real thing? Now then. Are you ready? Allow me to explain the second part of the rule regarding graduation. Just like I explained before, you must kill someone if you want to leave. However, even if you do that, there's still one more part to the agreement you have to uphold. Remember, don't get caught. Then perhaps... You were referring to rule number six of the school regulations. If you are blackened, that if you're the blacken that committed the murder, you can't be found out by the other students. That's what you're talking about, is it not? In other words... Bingo! It's not enough to just kill someone. You have to actually get away with it. Which naturally means you need a system in place to assess whether or not it's been t gotten away with. So, after a certain amount of time, time after a murder has taken place, a class trial will begin. And this is where the trial investigation, investigation segments come into play. And where my experience with Ace Attorney will really come in handy. Class trial? Hmm. Yup! It'll begin a few hours after the it'll begin a few hours after the murder. Everyone will gather together, including the blackened who committed the murder. And they and the spotless students will all engage in one big debate showdown. During the trial, you'll have to present your arguments about who you think the blackened is. And once everything comes to an end, the outcome will be decided by popular vote. If the answer you've arrived at is correct, only the one that disturbed your peace will be punished. The rest may continue their communal life. However, if you choose poorly, then the one who got away with murder will survive, and the rest of you will receive your punishment. Basically, we need to we need to do everything in our power to figure out who was the guilty party here, otherwise we're all going to suffer greatly. Which of course means your school life will come to an end. As far as class trial rules go, that's all there is to it. Well So um what exactly is this punishment you keep talking about? Hmm. Oh well to put it simply What? It's execution! Yeah! Execution? What? And by execution, you mean. Execution is. Execution! Execution! Electric chair! <laughs> Poison gas! <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane! So, to make sure I understand, if we get the culprit right, then only they die. But if we get it wrong, all the rest of us get executed? Pretty much. Well done. What a smart little chimpanzee you are. Look at you, implying you didn't do it without actually saying it. So it's basically what the outside world calls a lay judge system. Or an, or an Inquisition type thing. Which means you'll be deciding who you think the killer is. Hmm. But judge carefully, because all your lives are on the line. Some pretty high stakes. Uh -huh. Okay, let me just add the rule I just, just described to your handbook. Make sure to keep it in mind. New rules have been added to your regulations menu. Okay, let's take a look at it. Once a murder takes place, a class trial will begin shortly thereafter. Participation is mandatory for all surviving students. You know, I think this rule would have been a lot would have been a lot more useful if you had it here in the handbook right from the very fucking beginning, instead of you know withholding in crucial information like this to us from us. That hardly seems fair, if you ask me. Number eight. If the guilty party is exposed during the class trial, they alone will be executed. Number nine. If the 
guilty party is not exposed, they alone will graduate and all remaining students will be executed. 10. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. So, not only do we have this bit of information, we also know that you can basically change the rules on a, on a freaking whim if you so want to. Not good. Wait, hold on a second. What the hell are you talking about? You're freaking insane. You know that? Huh? Hmm? What the? A class trial? What the hell is that? I don't want anything to do with it. What's this? Why not? Stop it! What do you mean, why not? Why do I have to waste my time trying to figure out who murdered someone? What? What? Are you saying you're not going to participate in the trial? Only punishment awaits such blasphemy! What the hell are you talking about? What? Punishment? Hmm. I might... I don't know. Throw you in a deep, dark, scary prison or something. Shut the hell up! Say whatever you want. I'm not going to be part of this. I don't believe it! Believe it, man. She's being, uh, she's being rebellious. Don't be so selfish! Stop it! You're the one being selfish. Kill whoever you want. It's got nothing to do with me. The evil standing here before me. I'm trembling with fear. But I won't give in to such evil. It's my style to stick it out and resist till the very end. If you really want to get out of here, you'll have to go through me first. As he said that, he came charging at us. Although it was more of a waddle. But then... Are you enjoying yourself now? Are you? Hmm? Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is not allowed! You violated a school regulation! He's kind of right. I invoke the mighty summon spell! Help! To me! Ouch. Just ouch. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to... Why me? Suddenly, right at the end, her eyes shot wide open. And just like that, she never moved again. No way! What the? If you guys have any doubt up until now that this bear was dead serious about the kind of bullshit he wanted to put you all through, well, I hope all those I hope all those doubts have been erased by by this point. Otherwise, you truly are hopeless. I don't. This can't be real. No way! Well now. Now I am painfully aware of the great power and meaning of a promise. I really wanted to keep a corpse from popping up for no good reason, you know. <laughs> but I guess you all needed to be taught a lesson after all. Ah, <sighs> what an amazing promise. But now you guys understand, right? Now you see just how serious I am. Clear as crystal. Defy me and you get shot full of holes, exploded, buried alive, disintegrated, etc. So, if you don't want that to happen to you, you just obey those school regulations. Junko's body had been impaled with a bunch of spears. An unbelievable amount of blood is starting to pour out of her body. It was the first time I'd ever seen the move seen the moment someone's life came to an end. Nobody here could deny what they'd seen. Junko, who had who until just a second ago had been our friend, was dead. She died. She'd been murdered. 
in simple terms. It was the death of a human being. Hey, um... It's really not all that shocking. To an abnormal and to an abnormal creature of the night such as yourself? Maybe not. She just died, that's all. Just went and died. It's no more remarkable than the inevitable demise of the entire human race. I would hardly call that unremarkable, personally. It's just as natural as the eventual end of the world itself. <laughs> this isn't some superhero comic. It's not like when you die, you didn't really die. <laughs> this is reality! Why? Why did you have to kill her? Didn't you say you would put her in prison or something? Hmm. I changed my mind. I knew it. No. You've been wanting to kill this entire time. Say what? Kill this entire time? Don't be silly. You can't kill time. Or are you being metaphorical? Are you saying I wanted to waste time this whole time? What? Come on, what do you take me for? I'm Monokuma! Well, now. Anyway, none of that matters right now. I have something I'd like to give you to help you in your search for the Blackened. This little file has all the information I've gathered about the death in question. I'd like to call it... It's the Monokuma file! But it's information that you yourself are giving to us, and, well, frankly, you are the least... You are the last person anyone here wants to trust. So, why should we believe that everything that you have in this file of yours is the 100% truth? That's what I would think if I were in their shoes. I'd be very skeptical of what you'd present me with. I mean, naturally you guys aren't experts at this kind of thing, so you can only do so much of a corpse. So instead, I've gathered up everything I know about the circumstances and cause of death. What's that? How do I know the cause of death, you ask? Because the surveillance cameras picked up the whole thing. I got to see how it all go how it all go down. Don't you mean how it all went down? Oh, never mind. I, I misread that. So then. Wait. So then. You know who killed Saika? <laughs> of course I do. If I didn't, I couldn't possibly pass a fair and accurate judgment during the trial. Now could I? Fair point. Correct. That's a good point. The judge has to be able to make the proper decision. That's somehow comforting. Well. Now then, please put your please pull your please put your full effort behind your investigation. After all. You don't have any choice but to give it your best shot. Seriously, you don't have a choice. Okay, we'll meet up for the class trial in a little while. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess we'd better whip out our magnifying glasses, get our detective hats on, and start snooping. And with that, Monokuma disappeared once again. He left us stunned and confused. He left us at a total loss. He left us with Junko's dead body growing colder right in front of us. And for who knows how long, nobody said a word. The fact that Saika and Junko were dead was a huge shock, of course. But there was more to it than that. It was also the idea that one of us had actually murdered someone. And that if we didn't find out who it was, we would all die here. We would found ourselves in a situation where we couldn't help but look at each other with open suspicion. It was the worst situation imaginable. And yet, even in such a perversely terrible situation, she didn't sow the slightest hint that it had gotten to her. Hey. Now's no time to wallow in your depression. The, the worst thing we can do right now is lose, fa lose all faith in each other. That would lead to the same disastrous result as having total faith in everyone else. What? Huh? In other words... Cooperation is absolutely key at this point. 
Who you decide to trust or not trust is, of course, up to you. Continuing to think about and talk about the deceased certainly isn't going to help at anything. What the heck? Saying stuff like that is just... Well, they're not wrong, are they? <sighs> How many times have I told you? Anyone who can't adapt will die. Death is the only thing awaiting those who are unable or unwilling to adapt. <laughs> if that happens, you only have yourself to blame. That's terrible! What an awful thing to say! Especially after what's happened! Just a second. Right now, exposing the killer is the most important thing. Because if we don't, we're all going to die here. <laughs> She's right. We need to begin our search right away. Of course. Either way, we can't run away from the situation, so we have no choice but to move forward. What the heck? We just have to do it, I guess. What other choice do we have? Well, we could all just die. <laughs> And not give the and not give the bear the satisfaction. There's also that option. Wait, hell, am I letting someone kill me? All right, damn it. Let's do this. We just have to do it. Everyone kept repeating that sentiment. They were using it like a mantra to give themselves strength. But they were right. We just have to do this. No matter how much no matter how much we don't want to, we have no choice. And if that's what it takes to survive, then that's what we have to do. On top of that, there was something I needed to find out. I had to know why Saiga had to die. Why she had to be the one. So, some of the, so for some those of you who are wondering why it was so damn quick and easy for me to fill out Saika's report card, this is why. She's our basically our first victim of the game. And that's also why it's pretty much a good idea to follow the green text the green text's advice and uh, try to uh, bond with her as bond with her as soon as you can. I'm terrified to find out, but still, I have to know. Otherwise, I knew I'd never be able to accept her death. Which is why. I don't have any choice. I have to do this! Yep! We need to uh, start looking into. We need to start looking into the cause of Saika's death, along with any evidence that we can gather that might point us as to who might have done it. But I think we're gonna. But I think I'll save that uh, our investigation for the next episode. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut things off here. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Danganronpa Trigger, ha Trigger Happy Havoc. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time. Take care.